Hey y'all, welcome back to the Craft Castle. In a previous video, I showed you how to create a shaker gable box in Design Space. So this is video two for that. It is all of the small pieces and how in the world we're gonna assemble this to get this box right here. Okay, so in the video, in the previous video, you should have your pieces of cardstock already cut out and your clear transparency. It is hard to see because it is clear. You're also going to need glitter of your choice or tube confetti, something of that nature. You could use polymer clay pieces as well. I got these just from the Dollar Tree or the Dollar 25 cent tree. Just as an example of items that you can use, it's the same ones that I have in here, but just to show you that you can put things in it and it will become a shaker. The other thing that's really important with this is that I am using some silicone glue. This is Super Tight's silicone glue. I love this. I even use this with all of my acrylic. Um, it's almost empty, which is why I have it in my little glue holder so it stays at the bottom i also have it in a needle nose pointed glue bottle for easier so the glue doesn't get as messy i'm also using precision craft glue just because we're working with cardstock and i want to make sure that there is no like glue messes everywhere but this silicone glue is quite important because it's a gap filler so it will create a very nice look and it dries clear but a very nice look and make sure that it fills in all the gaps of your box so you don't have leaking confetti everywhere. The other thing that you're also going to need that we had used for the gable boxes is your scoring tool. The reason for that is we need to score our transparency. I've tried doing the score lines already with the Cricut doing it and I did not like that look. It did not, it didn't do anything for me. It didn't even leave a mark or anything like that. So I just took my scoring um, thing out and I am going to make them myself. So using the mechanism of our actual shaker, I am just lining up my clear transparency. It is going to be hard to see because it is clear, but it is on top. And all I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna draw on my clear really hard and I'm just going to notch my transparency on both sides and again going to be hard to see but I put a notch right in here and then one right here that is where I need to continue drawing my line I'm going to take a small little ruler and I'm going to line up those notches got a little piece of cardboard so I can see it a little bit better and I'm just going to line up the notch that I did, making sure that it's just gonna be straight down. And see when I press down, it kind of flips up. That is exactly what you're wanting. You're wanting that, that plastic to lift up just a little bit. The pressure on the crickets would not give me the right amount of pressure I needed for this step. So that's why I'm just creating them myself. We're done doing that. Line, line up the second one. Pressing again. And now you kind of have it like where it's bowed just a little bit. So I'm just gonna bend this over and make a good crease. Just like that. So now, there you go. Hopefully it's hard. It's not as hard to see now that it's bent a little bit. Okay, doing the same thing with, with what we did with here with bending the creases. I am going to, the pressure of the crickets never really give it a good score mark. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna re-score these lines just a little bit more. Okay, when you have all of those done, go into your bigger portion as well and make sure you get good score lines. Okay, now that you have that done, we are going to just put these back together. See how there's not another lip on this side, but uh, there's one on this side. All we're gonna do is put these together and we have just some leftover cardstock from our original cut and we're gonna cut this down to size. You wanna make sure that it covers up the entire seam. Okay, so now that I have that cut, I'm just going to put a little bit of this glue. I'm gonna put it right on the seam of both sides. Put these two together. 
just take my rectangle we're going to make sure that it's nice and even on both sides we're going to let this dry as that dries we can go ahead and just fold in our score lines we're going to fold in and fold out okay because there's no score line right here just take your ruler again match it up to the seam and then put your little scoring tool draw it down the center there we go and then we're going to fold this in Okay, I always like crisp lines, so I just take my little brayer tool and I fold these down nice and crisp. Okay, then we have another score here and here, so we're going to fold this in and also stamp it down so we get nice crisp lines. There we go, nice and crisp. Okay, taking our clear transparency, making sure that it fits in there, it should, as long as we did the design process right, it should fit just fine. Okay, again, with the silicone, I it's upside down. I always just refill them into a smaller um, glue bottle because it's more of a precision tip. You wanna take a bead of this glue and go around the entire perimeter of your window. I would not dot this part because this is what is going to house your confetti, so you don't want it to leak out anywhere. Nice even line throughout, and then we're going to lay our transparency inside, but then lining up your score lines too, and you don't want to drag it around because if you get glue on the inside window or the, the window portion, you'll be able to see that when it's dry. Then we want to fold up the window, pressing to make sure that it's going to get a good, nice, good glue. Okay, as this dries, I just folded it into itself. So all the glue, I'm going to wait for the glue to dry, but, all, but the entire transparency will glue to itself. And it won't be so floppy. Okay, as we wait for that to dry, I'm just going to set this aside, put this on this. Let's start folding in our mechanism, our shaker mechanism. This one you want to do all, so I fold it in, I'm going to fold in on everything. When I'm done folding in, I'm going to fold out as well. So we're going to just essentially breaking the fibers in the paper. All right, now that you have that all figured out, we're going to Put one of these in just like this. That's gonna be like the bottom, and this is going to be the top. Our shaker isn't going to be too large. Remember, the larger this rectangle, the deeper the shaker. So we're just gonna make sure that this is folded in like that. Open this back up, and your glue should be fairly dry when you go to start working on this next part. Okay, then, See how we have the sandwich with the, this is our back, then we have the sandwich, and then these are our flaps. The flaps need to be pointed this way with your sandwich, and we're going to just lay this inside. Now, only working on the bottom portion, just lining this up, make sure your little tabs are pointed outwards. So this is what it's going to look like that and then these are pointed outward and all your little flaps that you created are also pointing out then we're going to take a more silicone and we're going to put another bead of glue only on the bottom portion the bottom portion and then the inside flaps right here and right here we're only going to do the bottom and then we can fill at the top Now that we have that, the sides of our box need to 
line up with the insides of our score lines. Okay, this glue does dry fairly quick if you don't use a whole lot. We're gonna try and assemble the bottom portion of this box. Put these lips into place. Okay, flip open this top portion. We'll go, we can go ahead and glue this small little flap. I'm just gonna use the precision craft glue for this. Bend these tabs out. Okay, so our shaker box is coming together. Looking so cute. We're gonna open up this top flap. When the silicone is dry, then you can open up the top flap and then we can start adding in our shakers. I'm gonna use green since we have a green shaker box today. I'm just gonna throw some in there. We'll add in some silver just for a little bit more color. All right, when you get that all filled in, oh my goodness, this stuff. Drives me crazy, but it's so cute. We do have a little bit inside of our box. That's because I was just making a mess. So now what we wanna do is close this back up just a little bit, just like that. And we're gonna try and pour out what's in that box. There we go. Okay, now it's cleared. Okay, when you have everything filled up, your entire shaker filled up, now all you wanna do is take more of that silicone glue and I'm gonna put it on the uh, this tab, the outermost tab. Same with the small little ones. I'm just gonna just add a little dot of glue on either of the sides of the tabs. Like that. Just do a little bit of glue. And then we're gonna fold this in. Try not to touch that glue, but fold this in. There we go. Okay, then when that's all dry, then all you have to do is fold these in, just like that. Hook them into your gable box. All right, here is our finished box. It turned out so stinking cute. I love it. Okay, so the next video that's gonna be in this series is how to customize this to fit the theme that you need. I'm gonna turn this box into a Christmas cookie box because it is Christmas time, holiday baking season is coming up, and I'm going to change this into a baking theme box. I will see you soon, and I sure hope I inspired you to make.